done catching keeping them tied I have a safe area the reason these are filled with water is so that if they swing around they bump into that don't go obviously into anything and then the spray bottle strictly water horses hate this sound doesn't matter how much training they seem to have it's just even tucker okay yes Tucker, well, Tucker's fine because he gets it done. He's had it done for eight years now. And then grooming is more of a passion that we have, not so much for the horse. So the only grooming these guys have had is with a really nice little massager and a spray bottle. The spray bottle just for training. And then the massager, they go, oh yeah, that feels really nice. And I try to make it a very pleasant experience that any time that they're tied up in my, my training, that they get something. The first thing that happens to them is always very pleasant. Because it might not always be pleasant the entire training process, right? And I do all their favorite areas and brush that. Spray. Spray. Excuse me, kid. And she's quite used to it. Kate, okay, get out of the way, please. And then over. I always have a, a some sort of a stick doesn't matter what kind it is to teach them to move back and forth when tied because you can get pinned against the wall over here I just say the word over and then I tap them do this part here and she's pretty good like she was the hardest one to get desensitized to this and she's still obviously a little jumpy but if you leave her for another year she's gonna be right back to being jumpy again so even if it's done once a week or once every as long as it's good it's systematic if it's the same thing they don't like change they like consistency so she's been very consistent the same amount of everything done to her so then to get her to move over again eventually it's just a little tap on the bump over Good girl. and if i always have some sort of a stick like i said handy that if she didn't move over for me then i can reach over because i started it with this over tap tap and then over because I don't want to be squashed against walls. You might have had that happen when you're trimming feet. <laughs> okay? So I'm very picky about that. Alright, so I'll just give her a quick wipe down with the brush here. You're a good girl. Oh my well, this is going on. Making sure that I handle every part. And it just builds trust. And they love their belly buttons scrubbed, so that's another area I do. Especially on the mares. So that it gets them prepared for uh, what if you have to clean your teats one day. So I just do a little rub there, watching to see I'm not going to get cow kicked. Over. Good girl. Starting at the front on this side. And I won't do too much grooming on her, just so it won't take up too much time. But this is all the grooming she's had. And then the manes and tails a little bit, but it's just so that she, it felt really good. And it also served the purpose of training her to not squish me, training her to be handled and gently rubbed everywhere. They don't have a lot of patience at this age, so don't take too much time. For feet, they've been worked with every day of foot, foot, good girl. They have to hold it there till I say, okay, foot, or it'll get bumped. Good girl. Foot. Good girl. And then, foot. Nope. Foot. Foot. I like the foot to land in my hand. Okay? I do too much trimming with a bad neck. Yeah. They gotta hold that thing up themselves. As soon as they drop it back down and get real rude about it, I go, nope, foot. Move it back to me. Good girl. Okay, so like I said, this is something you, anybody can basically train them to ride, but it's yeah. these are the things that I find everybody struggles with. Yeah. Manners of feet, tying, grooming, spraying. Foot, please. Basically, foot. it's the foundation. Yeah. Good girl. Like anything, a house, no, yep. no foundation, it's no. Yeah. And if they trust you to handle all these little things, everything else is so easy. Over, please. Over. Good girl. 
and foot. And then I practice this. Hood, nope. Nope. Gotta hold it. The hood, you're off. Uh, foot. Nice. Feet go off. And foot. And I've already trimmed them for you guys, yeah. so they're good for another 12 weeks Thank or so. You. And good girl. Well done. Okay. All right, we'll just cut there for a second and I'll show you some leading. Maybe you'll want to go in the middle of the pen or do you want to keep it on? When I uh, bring them into a pen, I can do this out there in the paddock. I don't really care. If it was pouring rain, I do it in the stuff. This stuff isn't doesn't take a, you know, a fancy round pen. But I park them. Parking to me is very important. It teaches patience. I just say, whoa. And I step away. And she has to stay there. Five seconds. If she she is, they aren't. The ones I've shown you so far and this little girl aren't moving. Because they've been working on it lots. But if they move, let's say she set, took a step forward. I make her back up. Whoa. Whoa. Let's wiggle the line. You can... You know, it doesn't matter the technique, you can walk like this, you can wave this, just making it known when it's not allowed to move. Good girl. And I'll come up to him, give him a rub on this side. Whoa, she tried to follow me. It's not because my feet move that a horse leads. That's something I want you to be careful of. It's because you cue them to move with you. Come up on this side, rub. Whoa. Nothing drives people more crazy than a horse who won't stand still when they go to you know, throw the saddle pad on, it's wiggling around, so this is helping teach that. If I tell you to park, I don't care what I'm doing, where I'm walking, you haven't been cued to do anything. <laughs> I make a big deal out of it. Whoa. Good girl. Don't come with me. And then, to get her to lead, a nice belly in the line here are some slack elbow to fingertips worth. If you pull that forward, that horse should move. Whether I move my feet or not, that is the pressure that's put at the pull of the horse, how's the horse move? This is very clear. Whoa. Don't move your feet. Whether the rope is put on the ground or not, she's been told to stand still, she's stand still. I mean, she's a yearling, so do I expect her to stand there for an hour? Hell no. But she understands the concept, okay? I'll be able to get on, get somebody on them. They'll have patience, right? Walk on. As soon as the hand goes forward, you see that snap moving? Her halter moves. They walk. Then to stop, lift the hand, like up and back. That pulls the snap. All you're really thinking about is this is your lever. That's your, your stick shift. That means back up. This means go forward. That means back up. And that means go forward. So wherever your hand needs to be to do that. Walk on. And this is a reinforcement, which she doesn't need very much anymore. And I can't run because it hurts my neck, but I teach them to run next to me. the forward if she didn't wasn't obedient or all three of them are going home super obedient but you ask you motivate if they didn't listen so you ask I didn't have to motivate did I she knows she's, she knows her job and whoa Good girl. again it's about the snap be careful most people do this when they pull them drop their hand but what is that doing to the horse it's putting it into your personal space right so we don't want that if you block, especially when they're stressed, block. Keeps them out of your way. It's a safety thing. Then you don't have to discipline them for running you over. They're not gonna. They, yeah, they got a hand in their face. Then you yeah. tell them you're okay. I get it. You're scared. Yeah. Life goes on, darling. Okay? Then I do a quick little check. 
We lead on this side. Who cares what side you lead the horse on? Right? Doesn't matter. Walk forward. Hand goes forward. Now we just relax. It's her job to stay with me. Trotting. Walk. Pull the snap back. There, she didn't listen. I turned and faced her and backed her up. I don't like to bump on them or bang on them, but I show them, as you see, with a little bit of commotion or the stick. It's not as good on this side. Stop. I say, whoa, the world ends. Walk on. I don't tell her walk on. I'm just telling you that. You see, I have an idea. Pull up. Good girl, that hurts. But, I'll stop when you're told. So this is good. She's not listening perfect. This is, ah, better. And I blocked. And that will hurt you. That one was better. Her nose should be focused where we're going. Yeah. Not at me. Yeah. Because then the bum's gonna swing away. Yeah. I might get bit. Yeah. I get run over. Typically they just run you over. Yeah. Your horses all have very good natures, but they will run you over. Yeah. And they're scared. So I show them, you know what? I'm breakable. I don't care you're scared. Go over there. You have real estate over there to spook. Get it? That's how I teach them. Whoa. Good girl. She knew she made the mistake. You said she set herself back. Good girl. Yes, you're loved. That's enough sucking up, I know. No sucking up. Not in my personal space. I'll pet you. Okay? Now, the other couple little things I've done with them. You don't always need this or both. They're all neat. Are you good with this now? Like with, with leading, you can just reach back and swing. But I recommend this, even when going in their paddock, if they're being a little bit rude, they know if you tap them on the chest, they're to get back. Not panic, not be silly, just get back. Okay. Good girl. Nice. So I've got them going sideways. I'll stand in front of them, over, little circles with the whip. They should move over. Rub. Good job. Yield the hind end by lifting this hand up just to block the nose because sometimes they'll come into you and crowd you. Tap the air. Threaten to tap them on the back side if they don't move over just to put it in clean English, right? She should be able to move that part out of the way. Feel like she's a good girl by rubbing it away. And then the front half, you can just take the snap, move the snap that way. She should move her front end around her back end. If she doesn't listen, I can give her a little tap. And babies do overreact, right? A little tap, oh my God, I'm dying. Just keep asking, good girl, you're all right. You're all right. Ask again. And she did it perfect because she went, oh, I remember this lesson. Yeah. Even though she did it yesterday. Yeah. Right? They just, they sometimes there's distractions here. You guys are watching, John's filming. So she's like, what the heck? Super good girl. So you're just looking for a basic obedience of getting your horse to go forward, backwards. And this is extra, being able to go left and right. Yeah. You know, being able to yield the hind end in the circle being able to get the front end in a circle and being able to move them over. This is all bonus material. That's, see the tail swish? This is what you get from her. Don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, well, too bad. Where's where <laughs> your son at? Uh, I don't know. He's over there with his ponies. Just picking blackberries for them. All right, good girl. So that little bit of display of swishing tail, tossing her nose, that's the worst that she's ever done for me. Yeah. You know, she just goes, I do not want to. Like it. But you don't, you just, I have no emotion. I just go, keep going. Keep yeah. going. And then I tell her, thank you. And then she goes, mm -hmm. I guess my, I can't, she cannot renegotiate her contract. I have it written in stone. This is what you do. Yeah. Okay, that's how the rules are. Now they've all been uh, clipped, handled, ears. I've rubbed inside their ears. She's been the funniest about her ears and the worst about the clippers, actually, yeah. of the three. And everything to do with water, she was the hardest. But I trimmed, I pulled out all of the gerblies and I trimmed their ears. And this is stuff veterinary wise, yeah. invaluable, right? Uh, head down cue, pulling the halter down, release down, like you're holding an ice cream cone. I want to be able to examine their ears. So I want her to put her head down. Okay, so this is this should all take about 15 minutes, right? Head down, good girl. 
and that's all she needs to do. It doesn't have to be fancier. Just respond to the halter and put your head down. Good girl. You're a star. And then I also have been asking them just to bring their nose around. Just pulling her head to the side. Telling her good girl. Pulling it to the side. And I'll do that on each side. And that's just getting them ready for the eventual. Yeah. They're going to be bridled and ridden. Whether it's bridled with a bit or not, I don't care. It's still they got to give their face. And so that's it. So getting them on something, you know, through something over the teeter-totter. I've got them over the water. I've got them on. That's all bonus material. Long as this is the most important thing that you've got to educate them on is the feet, the grooming, and remind them. When you go, it always means go. I don't care if you're walking over plastic bottles, if you're walking over water, you go. Okay, so when they came off the trailer, they didn't have a go button. They, they, they had a follow John and Adiva to the paddock kind of, sort of, because we're scared. They have a go button now and they have a whoa. Okay, and they do lunge a little, but that's not something you need to work on. Okay, they've all been lunged and, and done some other stuff, but this is the key. And if they, you can keep doing that or have somebody to help you with that, it's just going to lead to fabulously easy to train as, as three-year-olds. Okay. All right, that's good. Yeah, you darling. <laughs>